Tonight, jailed for life, the convicted rapist freed early from prison who murdered Glasgow pensioner Esther Brown. Also making the headlines, getting ready for restrictions lifting. Dancing is back and distancing is out from midnight on Sunday. One couple's desperate journey for survival. An Ayrshire man and his Ukrainian wife flee from Kyiv and cross the Romanian border. Scotland students get confirmation of their results after a school year like like no other. The teenager living with stage 4 cancer fulfills her dream of releasing a song. And we get a sneaky peek at Scotland's only two toed sloths. I'm Sophie Wallace in Edinburgh. This is the STV News at 6. Good evening. A Scot has described having just 10 minutes to decide whether to risk leaving Kyiv with his Ukrainian wife or stay behind. Well, live now to our Westminster correspondent, Catherine Sampson. And Catherine, a very different tone to Prime Minister's questions today. Council tenants in some of Edinburgh's most deprived areas have told STV News they're living with damp, mould and condemned windows, with repeat requests for repairs being ignored. A dream come true. That's how Scotland's Eve Muirhead described the feeling of finally having an Olympic gold medal around her neck. Scotland produced one of their best performances in years as they claimed a 2-0 win over Denmark, booking a seeded spot in the World Cup play. Playoffs. Oh, Glenn, what a legend. I can barely remember him being on STV, but I suppose you were on telly when I was just in nappies, John. I had to get that in, didn't you? If I'm looking as good as him in my 90s, I'll be happy. Such a fascinating story. You can understand how he got away with it, though I don't look a day older than when I left school, Sophie. OK, in your dreams, Gordon, <laughs> in your dreams. That is it from us. We're back again tomorrow. See you then. Good night. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sophie Wallace with your Good Morning Britain headlines. The majority of COVID restrictions brought in to tackle the Omicron variant have been eased. Politicians are meeting with Ovo Energy bosses this morning to discuss the closure of the company's Perth base, affecting at least 700 jobs. One in three Scots are already struggling to pay their energy bills just weeks ahead of an announcement which could see rates increase by as much as half. MSPs are to hold a debate on this year's school exam data. Diet. All exams have been cancelled for the past two years due to the pandemic. A Musselburgh teenager has defied the odds and learned to walk again after being diagnosed with leukaemia and losing the power in his legs. Callum Grevers crowdfunded £30,000 to move out of his parents' home into accommodation that's more suitable for his needs. Finally, some tennis news and Andy Murray's back in action this morning at the Australian Open. He takes on Japan's Taro Daniel in Melbourne. OK, let's check out today's forecast. Here's Sean. And that's all from us. I'll be here with the lunchtime news at 5 to 2. But for now, it's back to Ben and Susanna. Now, students are being pushed into poverty to complete their studies, with many considering dropping out because of financial pressures. That's the conclusion of a new report by the National Union of Students. More than £5 million of support has been announced today by the Scottish Government, but as the cost of living rises, there are fears the cash will not be enough, as Sophie Wallace reports. Haroon is a third-year student at the University of Stirling. In between lectures, he works part-time to pay for his rent and other household bills. But with costs expected to rise significantly in the next few months, he's facing some tough decisions. I mean, it's difficult. If I work one day, I've probably come home stressed. When you have financial difficulties, it impacts your mental health, etc. And you start thinking, how important is uni, you know, if I can't provide for myself? I think engagement from students is just going to go downhill from now on if you're having to worry about more important things like actually providing for yourself to live, you know, day to day. Like, there's a certain point where you have priorities in your life and university for some people is an important, important priority. But even for those people, I think, when you can't afford to put the heating on and you're freezing every single night, there becomes like a point in which you have to make those hard decisions.
Situations like Haroon's aren't unique. According to a study by the National Union of Students, nearly half are working up to 20 hours a week on top of their studies to pay for things like rent, food and gas and electricity. Two thirds say they've experienced mental health problems because they're worried about financial issues, while a third have considered dropping out altogether because of money worries. More than £5 million of support is being made available by the Scottish Government to help students who are struggling, but there are fears it won't go far enough. The support from the Scottish Government announced doesn't really touch the sides of what's necessary just now. 65% of students um, who applied for hardship funding either didn't receive enough money or didn't receive any money at all. Um, so that's not the solution to this problem. What we need to see is real structural adjustments um, to make sure that students are supported um, to live comfortably. Despite access to more funding, the rising costs of bills, which has no end in sight, means students like Haroon are still nervous about their financial future. Sophie Wallace, STV News.